is the one and done philosophy blueprint done in college basketball. Let's bring in the great Jim Jackson, Fox Turner basketball analyst, and uh, he is in Charlotte covering those games and joins us on the program. All right, where do you stand with Kentucky and the one and done approach? Well, it's it's a little bit more, I think, convoluted than that. Just because it's been a while when coaches wanted to go young, they started to go young. You saw it across the country. Then coaches wanted to get older because they felt that that was the best way to win. Now, he, here's a bigger question, too, Dan, is with – and I, I try to ask questions like this with coaches when I'm doing games, especially now in the tournament, uh, but during the season – how do you build a program? How do you build culture now with NIL and with the transfer portal being so relevant? Because before, you know, you would get a freshman and you say, okay, two or three freshmen and let's grow these young men. Let's build them. By the time they're south, I mean, juniors and seniors, they're seasoned. They know the program. They know the culture. And we have an older team. And then that just goes down like Villanova, you know, would do that. Michigan State would do that. Wisconsin, schools like that. Gonzaga. The challenge today is with freshmen, depending on their background, the patience part, to know that you may sit a little bit and not play when in your ear other programs are saying, well, if you come here, you can play right away. And that may be where programs with NIL may have to overpay to keep freshmen in place to build that. So with John Calipari, listen, last year they lost to a team that was a higher seed. So it's not just, well, you got young guys this year. He had an older team last year that lost. So it's, and, and this team here with these young freshmen, let me tell you something about Greg Campy in Oakland. I've learned this over the years covering him. Coaches in the industry love and respect and hate him at the same time. They don't want to schedule him in a non-conference. I've done a lot of games with Oakland, especially against Michigan or Michigan State, where there's been so much respect for him. So this is not a fluke. This is coaches know he can coach, okay? But to answer your question, it's been that way in a while in regards to just a team full of freshmen thinking, thinking that you're going to win. Coaches have, have gotten off that train a while ago and really searched for the transfer portal to get old and stale. What would you do if you're Kentucky, this situation with Coach Cal? Would you would you even be thinking about making a change? I would. You, you have to because here's the thing about it. You're paying Coach Cal a lot of money to win games. This is Kentucky. You're thinking about national championships. But also you got to be conscious that you're not going to win a national championship every year. But how do we compete? How do we grow? What are, where's our where's the state of our program? These are the questions that you have to ask. Where are we going to be four or five years from now? And who could be the successor? Is it a younger individual that will grow with the new culture and understand where we want to go? These are all the things that you have to understand. I just went through the process with not myself, but with the new AD, Ross Bork, the new president at Ohio State. And in regards to evaluating where the program wants to begin, we're not Kentucky from a basketball perspective, but these are the questions that the same ADs across the country are asking. And I think it's critical. And I think now is a a time that you have to reevaluate and look at where the state of the program, whether that's Cal, they did at Louisville, you know what I mean? In in different areas, Ohio State, um, you know, what's out there in the market and who can best fit us, not just for today, but for the next five or hopefully 10 years. I just think that, you know, building up and getting that recruiting class as opposed to, you know, going around the country and saying, hey, I could get a shooting guard. I can get a rebounder here. These guys are already proven. And NIL, and I mean, the transfer portal has changed all of this. I would look at Villanova, what they've done. I'd look at what UConn's doing right in front of us right now. It's Mm -hmm. nice. It's it's nice to have potential, but potential, if they reach it, they're probably only playing one year. And if I'm going to get somebody with experience, who, mm-hmm. who maybe understands they're not an NBA player, that's where I'm going. Well, but here's the thing, though, Dan. You're looking at um, Villanova, UConn. They've already been built. So their culture was there. But this year, they got Cam Spencer uh, at UConn to replace Hawkins and some guys, okay? So they got one transfer in that paid huge dividends. Talking to Tom Izzo at Michigan State, 
he's kind of in that in between where he understands that he has some young guys that he can grow, but that he may have to dip his foot at some point into the transfer portal. It's it's an interesting dynamic. Um, Villanova is the same way. This year they had you know three or four transfers that came in. Yeah. Okay, that Kyle Neptune had to figure out how to build that program differently. And I don't think you're going to be able to build it the same way that you did before. Look, Chris Jans from Mississippi State, the coach there, at his press conference came in and said, I'm not here to build a program. I'm here to win. And if that means that every year I'm going to have to go to the transport portal and look for a point guard, for a shooting guard, that's how I see it is building. So everybody has their different way of looking at it, Dan. But it, we're still evolving into what NIL and this transport portal is ultimately going to be. So we're not done yet. It's still some adjustments to the matrix, I believe, that are going to happen in the next few years. Talking to Jim Jackson, former NBA star, Ohio State star, and now working for Fox and Turner as a basketball analyst. You know, you... I don't know how much you got to see with uh, Jack Golke lighting up Kentucky, but like guys get into the zone and it's just weird. You know, like that feeling you get, you don't know how you get into it or how you fall well, out of it, but he, he was in it certainly in the first half. What is that feeling like? It's, it's nothing like it. It's nothing you prepare for. I mean, one time when I was uh, my 50 point game in, in um, Dallas, I was sick the night before. We're playing in Denver. Couldn't sleep. You know, the altitude, it was dry in my room. I had a sinus infection. I was up all night. I had to, I had to actually turn on the shower to let steam in in the room so I could breathe a little bit. So the next day, practice, I mean, shoot around. I'm not feeling well. I'm, dra- I'm dragging. But as the game, I got closer to the game, I just felt relaxed. I didn't think about anything. I didn't know I was going to have 50. But once I started to play, I just let the game take over. It didn't think about it. And guys I've talked to or guys I've seen that have been in the zone, it's just one of those things that, Dan, it's a, it's a euphoria you have where you don't even think about it. Your body's just so relaxed. You just hope You're just playing. And the teammates know it, too. Okay. Yeah, so, I was going to ask you that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Teammates and coaches know it. So we'll try to get a player in the situation where the ball touches their hand. And you get guys easy shots. And then once you start cooking, sometimes, bro, you – some of the shots he was hitting, you know, you just over two or three defenders. And then you <laughs> – defense, no, defense, nothing you can do about it unless you just all out face guard. I mean, he never touches the ball, which is virtually impossible because you're going to give up layups and everything else around the court. But we, nothing like it, Dan. We had uh, Wright Thompson, great uh, writer from ESPN. He did a profile on Caitlin Clark. And I said, you know – who does she remind you of? And he said, Kobe with a ponytail. And and he said that from what perspective? Was it her demeanor? A Was killer. it her attitude? Yeah. Killer. Yeah. Yeah. And but you know, and here's the thing too, it's funny because women's basketball has had this in the past. But the 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 I think what what's happening is in sports today, because of social media, because of NIL, because of sponsorship. More eyes have been on it. Last year's national championship game helped tremendously. But it's been Maya Moore, Brianna Stewart, um, Candace Parker. It's been women's basketball players who have dominated and played well and could have been in the same position. And this is not taking anything away from Caitlin Clark, that same situation. But the, the coverage, the entry wasn't the same. Does she have a story? It's a story there that makes people want to follow. And, and the thing that I hate is this. You can praise other athletes and other players without tearing one down. And that's that's the tendency of what has to happen. Well, Caitlin Clark is this, but she's not. That has nothing to do with it. Yeah. She is her own entity. and She's great at what she does. If you want to say another player is better or another player at a different time is better, that's fine. But don't tear her down because of that. You know, the whole thing with Pistol Pete, they're totally two different things, okay? Pistol Pete's record is totally different because it's a men's game. So I understand how they compare the numbers, but how you get to those numbers are totally different because the level of competition is different. 
The timing is different. But what she's accomplished in women's basketball is not. It's unbelievable what she's done for the sport. And she should be praised for that. But there are other women who come before her who are playing right now that also should be acknowledged. Maybe not in the same stratosphere because she's the hot one right now. But my goodness, man. More people. I, I saw a thing where more people have bought bought tickets to the women's final four already <laughs> yeah. than the men. All right. Already. Does she have more range than you did? Yes, no doubt, because we weren't shooting. Think yeah. about this, Dan. Yeah. Back then, if you shot, Larry Bird is a great shooter. If you shot three three pointers, you were shooting a lot. That's that's why records are hard to, like, okay, you passed Larry Bird. Well, duh. I mean, Larry Bird shot three three pointers. He maybe shot a hundred for the year. If you if you're a quarterback, if you think about this, outside of maybe Dan Fouts and maybe Fran Tarkenton back in the day, Dan Marino, who threw the ball a lot. It was run first, pass. Yeah. So you don't think Troy Aikman, you don't think um, Joe Montana, if they threw and passed the ball a lot more, they'll have more yards? Yeah. So, of course, Drew Brees and all these quarterbacks today are going to have more passing yards because they're throwing the ball 30, 40 times a game. Where back then you threw it 18 to 20 or 15. So we got to keep in mind when we talk about these records, how they're accomplished and why. And you got you to keep that in a relative format when you're talking about the great. Oh, I got one more question for you. I didn't do it. Jay, <laughs> <laughs> Jay, Jay Williams said Kyrie is the most skilled player to ever play the game. It's, it's hard not to argue with his skill set what he does. Okay. When people hear that, oh, uh, th this is break it down. Right. Left hand, right hand. He can shoot it from three. The, the handles are unbelievable. Now, when Kyrie wants to set guys up and pass, he can do that. Can he finish with the best of them at the rim? Yes, he can. You tell me one area of Kyrie's game that's not exceptional. You can, you can send him left, but he's going to finish with his left. Right hand, jump shot, mid-range, a little post up on the block. You, what, what are you going to take away from him? Okay, is he the most skilled player in the history of the game, in your opinion? No. Okay. One of the most skilled players. Okay. Co Kobe was unbelievable. You know, so was Tim Duncan in his skill set. Okay? His skill set. His fundamentally skill set, he was unbelievable. Michael Jordan with his footwork. Um, is is did, Kyrie more skilled than the Joker? No, I think I think both have their own. I mean, what Joker is able to do at seven foot is unbelievable, and he's doing the same kind of thing. Now he doesn't handle it like Kyrie, and we I don't expect him to, but he handles it good enough to get from point A to point B to push it down the break. Have you seen Joker? I did really get picked handling the basketball. Yeah. No, because like, his handle is made for what he does. <laughs> <laughs> it's made for what he does. All right. Uh, have fun today. Well, today is a perfect day. You know why? Why? It's just, pra it's just practice. Well, it's just practice then have today. fun today. Well, I will. I have a couple cigars a little bit later. You oh, know really? I mean? Okay. Oh, always. Always. What are we smoking? I have a little uh, Hoya Monterey, oh. San Juan. Co oh, Cohiba 55th, one of my favorites. Yeah. Okay. It'd be a two for a three for today. I had a, a Co Cohiba Robusto last night. Did you? Was it Dominican or Cuban? Which one was it? I don't know. You, oh, gotta, you, you can't you smoke Cubans out. here. No, no, no. You get you can't buy them. See? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you, 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 can, you, can, you can smoke the hell oh, out right. of them. Okay. <laughs> so if, it, if, if it's a gift, I don't need to know how you got it. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Uh, I, <laughs> Have fun today. Great, great to I catch will. you. Thank you, buddy. All right. That's All Jim right. Jackson, Fox Turner basketball analyst. He's always fun. He's the best. He's great. He's the best. No, One he's... of the best guests we have. Yep.